to me, yeah, tell me when yours. we think about, you know, movement and exercise, right? It's one of the foundations of your day. We've got, you know, stress, sleep, and movement that you are setting yourself up for success. And whether you're trying to get pregnant or not, strength training across the cycle should exist, yes. right? You should be doing strength training, I say, two to three times a week, no matter which phase of the cycle in. We start talking about cycle syncing. I like to refer to that as, well, that's what you do in the other days and where you learn to listen to your body, right? Love that. If you're having lots of energy in your follicular phase, you want to run more, do your hit there, that's a great time oh, I for love it. that. Right, but now we're in our luteal phase. This is where probably because of the progesterone, you don't have as much energy. Right. And your body is going to get fatigued easier. We know your muscles can't go as far. So don't be surprised if you can't do as many reps on your strength days. And this might be where you naturally are gravitating to less intense cardio, right? And because yes. your body's trying to support enough caloric reserve for implantation. So it's kind of natural. But to me, the strength training isn't what should be given or go away, but that's what we see on social media. I love that approach. So it's like, that's the core. It's the other days that we're kind of looking at what should we do different. Yes. Like if you're adding HIT, maybe you take out your HIT session. Exactly. Maybe because cardio is really interesting. Cardio comes and goes very quickly. Like you can, um, if you've ever been on vacation and you like haven't worked out and you come back, gone. your cardio is like gone. Like it can come and go within a matter of a couple of weeks. Of course, it it takes time to build significantly, but strength training and muscle comes and goes a lot slower, which is good and bad. Um, but that's the good thing about cardio is like, even if you, people panic about taking it out, like, if I, am I going to lose all my gains? It's like, if you take it out for a couple of days, you might, you might, you know, feel a little gas when you come back, but you're going to feel probably the same once you like are a weekend. So, right. So it does, it's not the, quite the same. No. You know, when it comes to people who are trying to conceive, you know, you've heard me say this before, right? I always want them to shift their mentality a little because we want to be able to convince the brain that we're at a good place to get pregnant. Yes. We know that certain activities, high intensity exercise, you know, vigorous running, for example, 58% of runners have a luteal phase defect, like first sign of ovulatory wow. issues. So that means that if we want to get pregnant, we've got to make sure we really are giving our brain all the right signals. But that isn't a, I can't exercise at all. And that isn't do nothing, right? Yes. So it's still where strength training should be the core. And that's what I tell every patient. But it, I always want them to dial what they're doing for cardio down a little bit or just be a little bit more mindful, especially yes. when it comes to if they're already having any ovulatory issues, if you know they're having infertility, we don't want to be adding any you know, inflammation to the pie by overtraining or by doing something that is stressful for our body. Yes, I you know, love that. I see so many fertility doctors, though, who tell their patients, no exercise, don't do any, don't do anything at all. Yes. And that drives me crazy. Well, that can't be good for stress, which is not conducive for fertility, you would no. think. So I well, or for ongoing pregnancy, right? Because yes. we know that, you know, your health during pregnancy, your ability to tolerate labor, for recovery, for postpartum health. Yes. The more skeletal muscle you have built up, the better the entire pregnancy is going to be. Yes. So why would 100%. we, before you get pregnant, say you can't, and then expect women to feel comfortable exercising during pregnancy? Well, a lot of them don't. A right. lot of them just don't end up doing it because they're like, I'm scared, or they get they get detrained during that time. And then it's really, and then you hit your first trimester and you're like, the last thing I want to do is work out right now because I feel bad. A lot of women feel so bad during their first trimester. Ugh. And then they hit their second trimester and they might feel a little bit better, but then they're like, well, what do I do now? I'm so out of my routine. And so they spend like nine months plus the time to conceive detraining and then they hit postpartum. For the hardest thing your body will ever do. Right. You, you are like detraining during the right. hardest physical challenge that your body will ever have. And heal from and recover from. And I know it's, it, it is really a shame that, that that's still being recommended. Um, but again, I think it's because like as a practitioner, this was frustrating for me. I, I was like, well, where do I like send these to? I don't really feel comfortable sending them to like CrossFit or like just set them. I mean, you can definitely just lift on your own, like for sure. But a lot of women are like, I don't know what to do. They want to go to a class or they want to be led or something. Um, so I think it can be really frustrating to be like, well, what can I do? Right. Um, that's where I recommend, honestly, if someone wants to just start on their own, go do machines. Like, there's nothing – machines can absolutely build muscle, and it could be a great way for you to, like, get in, get going. Um, and, like, learn how to move your body. Learn like how to move assistance. it. You don't have to start with heavy barbell squats. Like, you can start with – there's machines a lot of times at gyms for every muscle group. So you could do – a circuit of machines, and that can be effective. You know, what I find is that, you know, 
some fertility doctors don't want to have the discussion with their patients about like what they can and can't do. So they put this blanket, you can't do anything. And some patients are like, well, that can't be good for me, right? And then yeah. they do too much or then they do get themselves in trouble, right? Because we'll use fertility treatment, right? During IVF, we have a very specific set of recommendations to pull back from because we don't yes. want you to have ovarian torsion, right? Where your ovaries getting enlarged with IVF. We don't want it to twist and have the blood flow constricted and be a surgical emergency. Totally. So I always say to patients at that phase, your ovaries are like water balloons in your pelvis and I need them to stay in your pelvis. That doesn't mean you can't do anything, but it means right. you have to think about what movement is going to move them and what's what are they going to stay here for? Totally. So like we'll use a bicep curl. Of course you can do that. Your water balloons are going nowhere. Yes. Right. Even a slow squat. Your water balloons are staying rooted in the pelvis. That's a great analogy. You know, but now if you're going yeah. running, we can both, we but know exactly. They're jiggling. What the, yeah, yeah, they're jiggling, right? <laughs> and we'll, we'll see patients who will present and they'll have ovarian torsion because they didn't listen. The recommendations felt so off pace that then they didn't get the right recommendations for what they really need to avoid. Totally. Right? It was like so black and white. It's like, that so they're... you can't do anything. And they're like, that can't be right. Yeah. And so then they, but they didn't get any good information about what they can, can do. and can't do. Right. Tell me about pregnancy, though, because I know that, you know, you're not an obstetrician. We're yes. a physical therapist. Yes. Actively pregnant, though. And I love that on social media, you've been promoting, I am, here I am, working out yes. during my pregnancy. Yes. Big believer in continuing to lift weights during your pregnancy. And, of course, there's modifications, like, you know, core work will eventually change once the bump gets to a certain size and it's difficult to regulate intra-abdominal pressure. Um, you don't want to lay flat on your stomach. Thing, things yeah. change and modify. But a lot of the routine that we've talked about to this point can stay the same. You can keep that cornerstone of strength training and then add in your cardio from there. So I strength train five times a week, and then I, uh, for 30 minutes, 35 minutes each. And um, I walk most days and I do like a little bit of like, um, it's called like steady state. So like 15 minutes of like moderate intensity cardio, yeah. like once or twice a week. So it's not that much of a time commitment. And I have had easy, this is my second pregnancy. I've had easy pregnancies to this point. I know a lot of that is genetics and I want to be sensitive about that because that's not everybody's experience. But I do think that exercise has allowed me to stay keep my energy levels up, which is so important because I have a one-year-old. <laughs> and uh, it's tough. Yes, and sleep better and feel better and just feel strong. Um, I'm a big believer that you can continue to progressively overload and get stronger during pregnancy if you are doing things like regulating your intra-abdominal pressure correctly, which we can talk about if you want, um, and listening to your body, right? Like right. Our bodies That's are so intuitive, during pregnancy, especially. So I believe like in the literature suggests this, some preliminary literature suggests this as well. Like you can train close to failure during pregnancy and there aren't necessarily harmful benefit. Like no. there's no, there's no harm. I don't know if you've seen anything different, but. No, it's the same thing. There's no scientific reason why we have to stop, especially building muscle during pregnancy. Yeah. And I share kind of with you, with ACOG, all their focus is on Cardiac activity, Cardio. right? Which, you know, really doesn't represent what I think the number one thing most women should be focused on during their pregnancy. And sometimes that feels like such a barrier, like 150 minutes and I feel like crap. So like, I'm not going to do anything. Totally. Totally. Right? Versus looking at increments of how we can help at least maintain, if not build muscle during pregnancy, because yes. we know what's coming to your body. 